In recent years, agriculture has undergone a significant transformation due to the emergence of new technologies. These technologies have revolutionized the way farmers grow crops, raise livestock, and manage their farms, leading to improved yields, increased efficiency, and better sustainability. One of the most significant advances in agricultural technology is precision farming. Precision farming involves the use of satellite and drone technology to collect data about soil conditions, crop growth, and weather patterns. Farmers can use this data to make informed decisions about when to plant, when to fertilize, and when to harvest. This technology has enabled farmers to maximize yields and minimize waste, leading to more sustainable farming practices. Another significant technological advance in agriculture is the development of genetically modified organisms, GMOs. GMOs are plants or animals that have been genetically engineered to possess specific traits, such as resistance to pests or drought. These modified organisms have been instrumental in increasing crop yields and reducing the need for pesticides and herbicides. However, there is some controversy surrounding the safety of GMOs and their impact on the environment. Advances in robotics have also had a significant impact on agriculture. Farmers can now use robots to perform tasks such as planting and harvesting crops, managing livestock, and monitoring soil conditions. This technology has the potential to reduce labor costs and increase efficiency, particularly in regions where labor shortages are common. The Internet of Things IAT has also had a significant impact on agriculture. Farmers can now use sensors and other connected devices to monitor soil conditions, weather patterns, and even the health of their livestock. This data can be used to make informed decisions about when to water, fertilize, or harvest crops, as well as when to take preventive measures to protect against disease or pest outbreaks. New technologies in irrigation have also led to significant improvements in agriculture. Drip irrigation systems, for example, deliver water directly to the roots of plants, reducing waste and increasing efficiency. Similarly, subsurface irrigation systems can deliver water to plants without losing any to evaporation or runoff. Biotechnology has also played a role in the development of new agricultural technologies. For example, researchers are exploring the use of biofuels made from crops such as corn and soybeans as a sustainable alternative to fossil fuels. Additionally, advances in plant breeding techniques have led to the development of crops that are more resistant to pests and diseases. as well as crops that can tolerate drought and other environmental stresses. Finally, blockchain technology has the potential to transform the agricultural industry by enabling greater transparency and traceability in the food supply chain. Farmers can use blockchain to track their products from the field to the consumer, ensuring that food is safe, high quality, and sustainably produced. Here are some additional technological advances in agriculture that are worth mentioning. Artificial intelligence, I, I has the potential to transform agriculture by helping farmers make more informed decisions about crop management. For example, I can analyze satellite images to predict crop yields, identify diseased plants, and monitor soil moisture levels. This technology can also help farmers optimize their use of fertilizers and pesticides, reducing waste and minimizing environmental impact. Vertical farming, 
Vertical farming is a type of indoor agriculture that involves growing crops in stack layers using artificial lighting and climate control systems. This technology allows farmers to grow crops in urban areas or other locations where traditional farming methods are not feasible. Vertical farming can also be more efficient than traditional farming, as it uses less water and produces higher yields per square foot of growing space. 3D Printing 3D printing technology has the potential to revolutionize the way farmers produce tools and equipment. Farmers can use 3D printers to create custom parts and components for their machinery, reducing downtime and improving efficiency. This technology can also be used to create specialized tools for tasks such as planting, harvesting, and pruning. Precision Livestock Farming Precision livestock farming involves the use of sensors and other technologies to monitor the health and well-being of livestock. Farmers can use this technology to track the movement of their animals, monitor feed intake and growth rates, and detect early signs of disease. This technology can help farmers improve animal welfare, reduce the use of antibiotics, and increase efficiency. Biodegradable Packaging Biodegradable packaging is a sustainable alternative to traditional plastic packaging. Researchers are exploring the use of biodegradable materials made from agricultural waste products, such as cornstarch or cellulose, to create packaging that breaks down naturally in the environment. This technology can help reduce plastic waste and improve the sustainability of the food industry. Autonomous vehicles Autonomous vehicles, such as drones and self-driving tractors, have the potential to revolutionize the way farmers manage their fields. These vehicles can be used to monitor crop growth, apply fertilizers and pesticides, and perform other tasks that traditionally require human labor. This technology can reduce labor costs, increase efficiency, and minimize the environmental impact of farming. Bioreactors Bioreactors are devices that use microbes to convert waste products into useful materials. In agriculture, bioreactors can be used to convert animal waste into fertilizer or to produce biogas that can be used to generate electricity. This technology can help farmers reduce waste, improve soil health, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Nanotechnology Nanotechnology involves manipulating matter at the atomic or molecular scale. In agriculture, researchers are exploring the use of nanotechnology to develop new materials and technologies that can improve crop yields. Reduce waste and improve the efficiency of fertilizers and pesticides. For example, nanoparticles can be used to deliver nutrients to plants more efficiently or to create new types of pest control. Hydroponics Hydroponics is a type of agriculture that involves growing plants in a nutrient-rich solution instead of soil. This technology allows farmers to grow crops in areas with poor soil quality or limited access to water. Hydroponics can also be more efficient than traditional farming, as it uses less water and produces higher yields per unit of growing space. Machine learning Machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence that allows computers to learn and improve from experience. In agriculture, machine learning can be used to analyze large amounts of data, such as weather patterns, soil conditions, and crop growth, to help farmers make better decisions about crop management. This technology can also be used to identify new plant varieties or to optimize the use of water and other resources. Plant-based meat alternatives 
Plant-based meat alternatives are becoming increasingly popular as consumers seek more sustainable and ethical food choices. Researchers are exploring the use of plant-based proteins, such as soy or pea protein, to create meat substitutes that are healthier and more sustainable than traditional meat. This technology has the potential to reduce the environmental impact of the meat industry and improve the health of consumers. As a waterfowl species, ducks have been domesticated for thousands of years, and today, they are one of the most common types of poultry found on farms around the world. One of the most popular breeds of ducks is the Muscovy duck, known for its high-quality meat and eggs. In this essay, we will explore the different aspects of caring for and raising a flock of Muscovy ducks. First and foremost, it is essential to provide a safe and secure environment for your ducks. This includes a shelter that is warm, dry, and well ventilated, as well as a fenced-in area for them to roam during the day. Ducks are susceptible to a variety of predators, including foxes, raccoons, and even large birds of prey, so it's crucial to take precautions to protect your flock. One of the most important aspects of caring for ducks is providing them with a healthy and balanced diet. While ducks are omnivores and will eat a wide variety of foods, including insects, plants, and small animals, they also require a source of clean water and a good quality feed. Ducks require a higher protein diet than chickens, so it is recommended to feed them a specialized duck feed that contains at least 16% protein. In addition to feeding, ducks also require regular access to water for bathing and drinking. Ducks are well known for their love of water, and they will spend much of their day in and around it. It's important to provide your ducks with clean and fresh water at all times, and if possible, a shallow pool or pond for them to swim in. Another aspect of duck care is maintaining their health and preventing disease. This includes regular cleaning of their living area, ensuring that their food and water are not contaminated, and providing them with proper vaccinations and medications as needed. Ducks are also susceptible to parasites and pests such as lice and mites, so regular checks for these pests are essential. When it comes to breeding ducks, there are a few things to keep in mind. Ducks reach sexual maturity at around 6 months of age and will lay eggs year-round if provided with enough light and warmth. If you're interested in breeding your ducks, it's important to provide them with a suitable nesting area and to monitor their eggs regularly for signs of fertility. There are many different ways to raise ducks, from small backyard flocks to large commercial operations. One popular method is to raise ducks for meat production. Muscovy ducks are known for their lean and flavorful meat, and with proper care and feeding, they can grow to a marketable size in just a few months. When raising ducks for meat, it's important to provide them with a high-protein diet and plenty of space to move around. Another way to raise ducks is for egg production. Muscovy ducks are known for their large, richly flavored eggs, which are often used in baking and cooking. To maximize egg production, it's important to provide your ducks with a consistent source of food and water, as well as plenty of natural light. Ducks will lay eggs year-round if provided with enough warmth and light, and they will typically lay their eggs in a nesting box or other designated area. 
Ducks are social animals and thrive in groups, so it's important to keep them in flocks of at least three or four birds. When introducing new ducks to an existing flock, it's important to do so slowly and carefully, as ducks can be territorial and aggressive towards newcomers. It's also important to provide your ducks with plenty of space to move around and access to natural materials like hay and straw for nesting and preening. One important consideration when raising ducks is the issue of water management. Ducks produce a lot of waste, and if their water source becomes contaminated, it can lead to health problems and disease. It's important to provide your ducks with clean and fresh water at all times, and to regularly clean and replace their water containers to prevent the buildup of bacteria and other contaminants. When it comes to duck care, there are a few health issues that can arise that owners should be aware of. One common issue is bumblefoot, a bacterial infection that affects the feet of ducks and other birds. Bumblefoot can be caused by a variety of factors, including poor living conditions and injury, and can cause pain and discomfort for the affected bird. If you notice signs of bumblefoot in your ducks, such as swelling, redness, or the formation of a scab or abscess, it's important to seek veterinary treatment as soon as possible. Another common health issue in ducks is respiratory infections, which can be caused by a variety of bacteria and viruses. Respiratory infections can cause symptoms such as coughing, wheezing, and sneezing, and can lead to serious health problems if left untreated. To prevent respiratory infections in your ducks, it's important to provide them with a clean and well-ventilated living space, as well as a high-quality diet and access to clean water. Ducks are also susceptible to a variety of parasitic infections, including worms, lice, and mites. Parasitic infections can cause a range of symptoms, from itching and irritation to weight loss and lethargy. To prevent parasitic infections in your ducks, it's important to regularly check them for signs of infestation, such as eggs or live parasites on their skin or feathers. Treatment for parasitic infections may involve the use of medication or other interventions, depending on the specific parasite involved. In addition to health issues, there are also legal and regulatory considerations that come with raising ducks. In many areas, there are zoning laws and other regulations that govern the keeping of domestic animals, including ducks. It's important to research the laws and regulations in your area before starting a duck flock, and to ensure that you comply with any permits, licenses, or other requirements that may be necessary. One important aspect of raising ducks that shouldn't be overlooked is their behavior and social interactions. Muscovy ducks are social animals that form strong bonds with their flock mates, and they can display a range of complex behaviors and communication patterns. For example, ducks will often engage in preening and grooming behaviors to maintain their feathers and keep themselves clean. And they may also engage in courtship displays and vocalizations to attract mates. Ducks also have a natural instinct to forage and explore their environment, which can be both beneficial and challenging for their owners. On the one hand, allowing your ducks to roam and forage can provide them with important nutrients and stimulation, as well as help control pests and weeds in your garden or yard. On the other hand, ducks can be destructive to gardens and other landscaping, and may require additional fencing or other measures to prevent them from causing damage. Another important consideration when raising ducks is their reproductive behavior. 
Muscovy ducks are known for their strong mating instincts, and males can become aggressive and territorial during breeding season. If you're raising ducks for meat or eggs and don't plan on breeding them, it's important to separate males and females during the breeding season to prevent aggressive behavior and ensure the safety and well-being of your flock. It's worth noting that raising ducks can be a fulfilling and enjoyable hobby or business opportunity, but it's also a significant responsibility. Ducks require daily care and attention, from feeding and watering to cleaning and maintenance, and it's important to be prepared for the time, effort, and resources involved. However, for those who are willing to put in the work, raising ducks can be a rewarding and satisfying experience that offers a range of benefits and opportunities. Aquaculture, the practice of cultivating aquatic animals and plants, has become an increasingly popular industry over the years. One of the most common forms of aquaculture is fish farming, which involves raising fish in tanks or ponds. Fish farming has several advantages over traditional fishing practices, including increased control over the environment in which the fish are raised and the ability to produce large quantities of fish in a relatively small area. In this article, we will explore the techniques and best practices for raising fish in ponds or tanks, also known as aquaponics. One of the key factors in successful fish farming is choosing the right species of fish. Different types of fish have different requirements when it comes to water temperature, pH levels, and other environmental factors. Some common species that are raised in aquaponics systems include tilapia, catfish, trout, and carp. Once you have selected your fish species, the next step is to prepare the pond or tank for their arrival. This involves ensuring that the water quality is appropriate for your chosen species of fish. This includes monitoring pH levels, ammonia levels, and nitrate levels. A pH level of 7.0 to 8.0 is generally considered ideal for most fish species. Ammonia levels should be kept below 1 part per million, while nitrate levels should be kept below 50 parts per million. In addition to monitoring water quality, it is important to provide adequate space for your fish to grow and thrive. Overcrowding can lead to stress, disease, and reduced growth rates. As a general rule, one pound of fish requires about 10 to 15 gallons of water. It is also important to provide adequate oxygenation and filtration to ensure that the water remains clean and healthy for your fish. Feeding your fish is another critical aspect of fish farming. Depending on the species of fish, you may need to provide a specific type of food, such as pellets or live food. It is important to feed your fish on a regular schedule and to monitor their appetite and growth rates to ensure that they are receiving adequate nutrition. One of the benefits of aquaponics is that it allows for a closed-loop system in which waste products from the fish are used to fertilize plants, which in turn help to purify the water for the fish. This can help to reduce the need for chemical fertilizers and other inputs, making aquaponics a more sustainable and environmentally friendly form of farming. Another important consideration when raising fish in aquaponic systems is disease management. Fish diseases can quickly spread throughout a population if not properly managed, leading to reduced growth rates and even death. To prevent disease outbreaks, it is important to maintain good water quality, provide adequate space for your fish, and quarantine any new fish before introducing them to your main population. 
In addition to the factors mentioned above, it is important to consider the location and design of your aquaponics system. The system should be located in an area that is protected from extreme weather conditions, such as strong winds or excessive sunlight. Additionally, the system should be designed to allow for easy monitoring and maintenance, including easy access to the fish and plants and a system for removing waste products. When designing your aquaponics system, you may also want to consider incorporating additional elements, such as live plants or additional filtration systems. Live plants can help to provide oxygenation and nutrient uptake for your fish, while also adding aesthetic value to your system. Additional filtration systems, such as mechanical or biological filters, can help to remove waste products and improve water quality. Another important factor to consider is the economics of your aquaponics system. While fish farming can be a profitable industry, it is important to carefully calculate the costs and potential profits of your system before investing significant resources. Factors to consider when calculating costs include the cost of equipment and materials, ongoing maintenance and operation costs, and potential revenue from fish sales or other products. It is also important to consider the legal and regulatory requirements for fish farming in your area. Depending on your location, you may need to obtain permits or licenses to operate your aquaponics system, and you may need to comply with certain environmental or health regulations. It is important to research these requirements before beginning your aquaponics operation to ensure compliance and avoid potential legal issues. Ongoing education and research are essential for successful fish farming and aquaponics systems. The industry is constantly evolving, and new techniques and best practices are constantly being developed. By staying up to date with the latest research and sharing knowledge with other fish farmers, you can continue to improve and optimize your aquaponics system over time. One of the unique aspects of aquaponics is the ability to integrate fish farming with plant cultivation. This allows for a more efficient use of resources, as the waste products from the fish can be used to fertilize plants, which in turn help to purify the water for the fish. This closed-loop system can help to reduce the need for chemical fertilizers and other inputs, making aquaponics a more sustainable and environmentally friendly form of farming. There are several different types of aquaponics systems, including media-based systems, nutrient film technique, NFT, systems, and deep water culture, DWC, systems. Each system has its own advantages and disadvantages, depending on factors such as available space, desired fish species, and the type of plants being grown. Media-based systems are the most common type of aquaponic system and involve using a media, such as gravel or clay pellets, to support the plants. The media also provides a habitat for beneficial bacteria that help to convert fish waste into plant nutrients. In nutrient film technique, NFT, systems, plants are grown in shallow channels filled with nutrient-rich water, while in deep water culture, DWC, systems, plants are suspended in nutrient-rich water. Both NFT and DWC systems are typically used for growing leafy greens and herbs, as they require less space than media-based systems. In addition to fish and plants, aquaponic systems can also support a variety of other organisms, such as crustaceans and mollusks. For example, some aquaponics farmers raise freshwater prawns or crayfish in their systems, which can provide an additional source of income. To ensure the long-term success of your aquaponics system, it is important to maintain a healthy and balanced ecosystem. 
This requires regular monitoring of water quality and nutrient levels, as well as the use of natural pest management techniques to control pests and diseases. One key aspect of maintaining a healthy ecosystem is ensuring that the fish are healthy and free from disease. Fish diseases can quickly spread throughout a population, leading to reduced growth rates and even death. To prevent disease outbreaks, it is important to maintain good water quality, provide adequate space for your fish, and quarantine any new fish before introducing them to your main population. Another important factor in maintaining a healthy ecosystem is controlling pests and diseases in your plant cultivation area. Some common pests that can affect aquaponics systems include aphids, spider mites, and whiteflies. While chemical pesticides can be effective at controlling pests, they can also harm beneficial organisms in your system and lead to long-term environmental damage. Instead, many aquaponics farmers use natural pest control methods, such as introducing beneficial insects like ladybugs or lacewings to their system. Shrimp farming is a lucrative business that has become increasingly popular in recent years. To ensure that the shrimp are healthy and disease-free, it is essential to implement proper care and prevention measures. This article will discuss the ways to prevent and care for shrimp in the farming industry. Water Quality Management the quality of water in the shrimp ponds is crucial for the shrimp's growth and survival. Proper management of the water quality includes regular monitoring of pH, dissolved oxygen, and salinity levels. Additionally, the ponds must be well aerated to ensure adequate oxygen supply for the shrimp. Proper filtration systems must also be in place to remove excess waste and maintain optimal water conditions. Feeding Shrimp require a well-balanced diet to maintain good health and growth. The food should contain essential nutrients, vitamins, and minerals necessary for the shrimp's growth. Overfeeding should be avoided, as it leads to an increase in waste production and the growth of harmful bacteria, which can cause diseases. Disease Prevention Diseases can cause significant losses in the shrimp farming business. Therefore, it is essential to take preventative measures to avoid disease outbreaks. Proper pond management practices such as water exchange, pond cleaning, and maintaining optimal water conditions are essential in preventing the growth of harmful bacteria and parasites. In addition, regular health checks for the shrimp must be conducted to identify and isolate sick shrimp from the healthy ones. Biosecurity measures Biosecurity measures are put in place to prevent the introduction and spread of diseases in the shrimp farming industry. These measures include regular disinfection of equipment, vehicles, and personnel entering and leaving the farm. A strict biosecurity plan must be implemented to prevent the introduction of diseases from other farms, and any suspicious activity must be reported immediately. Harvesting Harvesting is a crucial process in the shrimp farming business. Improper handling of the shrimp during harvesting can lead to stress, injury, and death, which can cause significant losses. Proper harvesting techniques such as using specialized nets, handling the shrimp gently, and providing adequate oxygen supply are essential to ensure the shrimp's survival during and after harvesting. Stocking Density Management Stocking density refers to the number of shrimp per unit area in a pond. Overcrowding can lead to poor water quality, slow growth, and an increased risk of disease outbreaks. Therefore, 
It is essential to maintain optimal stocking density to ensure the shrimp's health and well-being. The ideal stocking density depends on factors such as pond size, water quality, and shrimp species. Regular monitoring of stocking density is necessary, and adjustments should be made accordingly to maintain optimal conditions. Environmental factors Environmental factors such as temperature, salinity, and dissolved oxygen levels can have a significant impact on the shrimp's health and growth. Therefore, it is essential to monitor these factors regularly and make any necessary adjustments. For example, if the water temperature rises above the optimal range for a particular species of shrimp, additional aeration may be required to maintain adequate oxygen levels. Quarantine and treatment. In case of disease outbreak, it is essential to take immediate action to prevent the spread of the disease. Quarantine measures must be put in place to isolate infected shrimp from healthy ones. Treatment options such as antibiotics, probiotics, and other medication can be used to treat infected shrimp. However, the use of antibiotics should be minimized, and alternative treatment options should be explored to prevent the development of antibiotic-resistant strains of bacteria. Record keeping Record keeping is crucial in the shrimp farming business as it helps to monitor and track the shrimp's growth, feeding patterns, water quality, and any disease outbreaks. Keeping accurate records helps to identify any problems that may arise and provides a basis for decision-making. Regular record-keeping also helps to comply with government regulations and certification requirements. Education and training Education and training are essential for the success of any business, and shrimp farming is no exception. Farmers must be knowledgeable about proper care and prevention measures, disease diagnosis, and treatment. Regular training sessions can help farmers to stay updated with the latest techniques, equipment, and technology. Attending workshops, seminars, and conferences can provide farmers with networking opportunities and access to valuable resources. Research and Development Research and development are critical in improving shrimp farming practices and developing new techniques and technology. Ongoing research helps to identify the causes of diseases, develop new treatments, and improve feeding techniques. Collaboration between farmers, scientists, and government agencies can help to promote research and development in the shrimp farming industry. Certification and Accreditation Certification and accreditation programs ensure that shrimp farmers comply with industry standards and regulations. These programs help to maintain product quality, promote sustainability, and increase consumer confidence. Farmers can obtain certification through programs such as the Global Aquaculture Alliance's Best Aquaculture Practices, BAP, program or the Aquaculture Stewardship Council, ASC. Marketing and Distribution Marketing and distribution are crucial for the success of the shrimp farming business. Developing a strong brand, building relationships with buyers, and exploring new markets can help farmers to increase sales and profitability. Effective distribution channels and logistics are necessary to ensure that the product reaches customers in a timely and efficient manner. Community engagement and social responsibility Shrimp farming can have a significant impact on local communities and the environment. Therefore, it is essential to engage with local communities and be socially responsible. Engaging with communities can help to build trust and support for the shrimp farming business. Farmers can also participate in community development projects and initiatives, such as supporting education and healthcare programs. 
Environmental Sustainability Shrimp farming can have both positive and negative impacts on the environment. Farmers must implement sustainable practices to minimize negative impacts and promote environmental stewardship. Sustainable practices include reducing water use, minimizing waste production, using renewable energy sources, and minimizing the use of chemicals and antibiotics. Continuous Improvement Continuous improvement is essential for the long-term success of the shrimp farming business. Farmers must regularly evaluate their practices, identify areas for improvement, and make necessary changes. This includes evaluating feeding techniques, water quality management, disease prevention, and other areas of the business. Continuous improvement helps to ensure the sustainability and profitability of the shrimp farming industry. Collaboration and Partnerships Collaboration and partnerships can help to promote the growth and sustainability of the shrimp farming industry. Ficus religiosa, also known as the Bodhi tree, is one of the most revered tree species in Hinduism and Buddhism. According to tradition, it was under the shade of this tree that Gautama Buddha achieved enlightenment, and it continues to be a symbol of wisdom and enlightenment in many parts of Asia. If you are interested in growing and caring for this sacred tree, there are a few things you should know. Ficus religiosa is a deciduous tree that can grow up to 30 meters tall, with a trunk that can reach up to 3 meters in diameter. It is native to the Indian subcontinent and is often found growing near temples and other holy sites. To grow a ficus religiosa tree, you will need to start with a healthy sapling. Look for a tree that is about 1 to 2 years old and has a strong central stem. When planting, make sure to choose a location that gets plenty of sunlight and has well-draining soil. Ficus religiosa trees can tolerate a range of soil types, but they prefer slightly acidic soils with a pH of around 6.5. Once your tree is planted, it is important to water it regularly, especially during the first few months. Ficus religiosa trees need to be kept moist but not waterlogged, so make sure to check the soil regularly and water when it feels dry to the touch. In addition to watering, you may also want to fertilize your tree once or twice a year with a balanced fertilizer. Pruning is another important part of caring for a ficus religiosa tree. In general, it is best to prune in the early spring or late fall, when the tree is dormant. This will help to encourage new growth and keep the tree healthy and vigorous. When pruning, make sure to use sharp, clean tools and cut just above a leaf node or bud to promote branching. One of the unique features of ficus religiosa trees is their aerial roots, which can grow down from the branches and take root in the ground. While these roots can be an attractive feature, they can also be a hazard if they grow too close to buildings or other structures. To prevent this, you may need to prune back the aerial roots on a regular basis. In addition to regular pruning, ficus religiosa trees may also benefit from occasional thinning. This involves removing some of the smaller, weaker branches to allow more light and air to reach the tree's canopy. Thinning can also help to prevent the tree from becoming too dense and prone to disease. Another important aspect of caring for ficus religiosa trees is pest control. 
These trees can be susceptible to a variety of insect pests, including mealybugs, scale insects, and spider mites. To prevent infestations, it is important to keep the tree clean and healthy and to monitor for signs of pests regularly. If you do notice an infestation, there are a variety of organic and chemical treatments available to help control the problem. It is important to note that Ficus religiosa trees have a deep cultural and spiritual significance in many parts of Asia. If you are growing one of these trees, it is important to be respectful of its cultural significance and to avoid any actions that could be seen as disrespectful or offensive. This includes avoiding cutting or damaging the tree, and being mindful of any rituals or traditions associated with its care. One important consideration when growing ficus religiosa is its root system. The tree has a widespreading, shallow root system, which can make it difficult to grow other plants nearby. If you are planning to grow other plants in the same area as your ficus religiosa tree, you may need to install a barrier to prevent the tree's roots from invading and outcompeting them for water and nutrients. Another challenge with growing ficus religiosa is its sensitivity to cold temperatures. The tree is not frost tolerant and may suffer damage or die if exposed to prolonged periods of cold weather. If you live in an area with cold winters, it is important to choose a protected planting location and to cover the tree with blankets or burlap during periods of extreme cold. When it comes to pruning your ficus religiosa tree, it is important to be careful not to remove too much of the tree's canopy. Over pruning can lead to a loss of vigor and make the tree more susceptible to disease and pests. Instead, focus on removing dead or diseased branches and shaping the tree's canopy to promote healthy growth and a pleasing appearance. It is worth noting that ficus religiosa trees have been used for centuries in traditional medicine for a variety of ailments. Different parts of the tree, including the leaves, bark, and seeds, have been used to treat everything from coughs and colds to digestive disorders and skin conditions. While modern medicine has largely replaced traditional remedies, the tree's medicinal properties continue to be studied and may have potential for future use. In addition to its cultural and spiritual significance, Ficus religiosa also has important ecological benefits. The tree is known for its ability to absorb pollutants and purify the air, making it a valuable addition to urban environments. Its leaves are also an important food source for a variety of herbivorous animals, including elephants and deer. Ficus religiosa is also an important species for reforestation and ecosystem restoration efforts. Its fast growth and ability to tolerate a range of soil types make it a good candidate for planting in degraded areas or areas that have been cleared of natural vegetation. Another interesting feature of Ficus religiosa is its ability to form mutualistic relationships with certain species of wasps. The fig wasp, for example, is a tiny insect that relies on ficus religiosa trees for both shelter and food. In return, the wasp pollinates the tree's flowers, allowing it to produce fruit. In Art and Architecture The tree's distinctive heart-shaped leaves and intricate root system have inspired artists and designers for centuries. and can be seen in everything from ancient temple carvings to modern buildings and sculptures. 
Another interesting aspect of ficus religiosa is its role in religious and spiritual practices. In Hinduism and Buddhism, the tree is often associated with the concepts of wisdom, enlightenment, and liberation. It is considered to be a sacred tree, and is often planted near temples and other holy sites. In some cultures, it is believed that tying a string around the trunk of a ficus religiosa tree can bring good luck and prosperity. This practice is often associated with the Hindu festival of Rakshabandhan, during which sisters tie a sacred thread around the wrists of their brothers as a symbol of love and protection. In addition to its spiritual significance, ficus religiosa has also been used for centuries in traditional medicine. The tree's leaves, bark, and seeds contain a variety of compounds that have been shown to have anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and antioxidant properties. Planting and caring for perilla plants Perilla, Perilla fertessens, is a herbaceous plant originating from East Asia and is widely grown in Japan, Korea, and China. Perilla has large, fresh green leaves with a distinctive aroma and is used in many dishes and medicinal applications. In this article, we will learn how to plant and care for perilla plants to successfully grow them at home. I. Steps for Planting Perilla Choosing the Seeds and Soil Choose perilla seeds and suitable soil for planting the plant. Perilla seeds are usually available at plant stores or online. The soil needs to be moist and well-draining for the plant to grow well. Caring for the seeds Perilla seeds are small and should be planted about 1 to 2 cm deep in the soil. After planting, water the seeds evenly and protect the plants from pests and diseases. Caring for mature perilla plants after about 7 to 10 days, the perilla plant will sprout and start to grow. At this stage, it's important to ensure that the plant receives enough sunlight, water, and nutrients. Perilla plants prefer full sun or partial shade and require regular watering, especially during hot and dry weather. Pruning and Harvesting To keep perilla plants healthy and promote growth, it's important to prune them regularly. This can be done by removing any yellow or dead leaves and cutting back any overgrown stems. Perilla leaves can be harvested when the plant reaches a height of about 20 to 30 centimeters. Simply pick the leaves from the stem, leaving a few leaves behind to allow the plant to continue growing. 2. Common Problems and Solutions Pests and Diseases Perilla plants can be susceptible to a range of pests and diseases, including aphids, spider mites, and fungal infections. To prevent these problems, regularly inspect the plant for signs of damage or infestation and take appropriate action, such as applying insecticidal soap or removing affected leaves. Overwatering Overwatering can lead to root rot and other fungal diseases. To avoid this, only water the plant when the soil feels dry to the touch and ensure that the soil is well draining. Fertilizing Perilla plants benefit from regular fertilizing during the growing season. Use a balanced fertilizer every two to three weeks to provide the plant with the necessary nutrients for healthy growth. Soil pH Perilla plants prefer a slightly acidic soil pH between 5.5 and 6.5. Test the soil pH before planting and adjust as necessary using lime to increase the pH or sulfur to decrease it. Propagation Perilla plants can be propagated from stem cuttings or by dividing the plant. To propagate from stem cuttings, take a 4 to 6 inch cutting from a mature plant and root it in water or a well draining soil mix. Companion planting 
Perilla plants make great companion plants for vegetables such as tomatoes and peppers, as they can repel pests and improve soil health. Winter Care Perilla plants are typically grown as annuals and will die off in the winter. However, in warmer climates, they may survive as perennials. If you live in a colder climate, you can try overwintering the plants indoors by bringing them inside before the first frost and providing them with sufficient light and water. Culinary Uses Perilla leaves are commonly used in Japanese, Korean, and Chinese cuisine as a flavoring agent and garnish. They can be used fresh or dried and have a unique flavor that is often described as a combination of mint and anise. Health Benefits Perilla is rich in antioxidants, including rosmarinic acid and luteolin, which have been shown to have anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer properties. It also contains essential fatty acids, such as alpha-linolenic acid, ALA, which is beneficial for heart health and brain function. Medicinal Uses Perilla has a long history of use in traditional medicine, particularly in East Asia. It has been used to treat a variety of conditions, including asthma, allergies, and digestive problems. Aromatherapy Perilla essential oil is also used in aromatherapy for its calming and relaxing properties. It can be added to a diffuser or used in a massage oil to promote relaxation and relieve stress. Culinary Diversity Perilla is a versatile herb that can be used in a variety of dishes. In addition to being used in Asian cuisine, it can also be used to flavor soups, stews and salads or as a substitute for basil and pesto. Sustainable Crop Perilla is a hardy and fast-growing plant that can be easily grown in a variety of conditions. It also requires less water and fertilizer compared to other crops, making it a sustainable choice for home gardeners and farmers. Harvesting Perilla leaves can be harvested when they are young and tender, usually around 30 to 45 days after planting. To harvest, Simply snip off the leaves with scissors or pinch them off with your fingers. Be sure to leave some leaves on the plant to encourage continued growth. Preserving Perilla leaves can be preserved in a variety of ways, including drying, freezing, or pickling. To dry perilla leaves, hang them upside down in a dry and well-ventilated area for several days until they are completely dry. Once dry, store them in an airtight container in a cool, dry place. To freeze perilla leaves, wash and dry them thoroughly, then place them in a single layer on a baking sheet and freeze until firm. Once frozen, transfer the leaves to a freezer bag or container and store in the freezer for up to six months. To pickle perilla leaves, wash and dry them thoroughly, then pack them tightly into a jar with salt, vinegar, and other seasonings of your choice. Allow the jar to sit at room temperature for several days or until the leaves are pickled to your liking. Culinary Uses Perilla leaves can be used in a variety of dishes, including stir-fries, soups, salads, and sushi rolls. They can also be used to make tea or added to cocktails for a unique and flavorful twist. Experiment with different varieties. There are several different varieties of perilla, each with its own unique flavor and aroma. Experiment with different varieties, such as green, red, or variegated, to discover your favorite. Share with others. Perilla is a plant that is easy to grow and harvest, making it a great gift for friends and family. Durian is one of the most beloved fruits in Southeast Asia, especially in Thailand. Known for its pungent aroma and rich, creamy texture, the Thai durian is highly sought after by both locals and tourists alike. However, growing and caring for durian trees can be a challenging process. 
In this article, we will explore the techniques and methods for growing and caring for Thai durian trees. Varieties of Thai durian There are several varieties of Thai durian, each with its own unique flavor and texture. Some of the most popular varieties include Munthong, Hani, Kanyao, and Ban. Munthong is the most common variety of Thai durian and is known for its large size and creamy texture. Hani is another popular variety that is known for its sweet and fragrant flesh. Kanyao is a smaller variety that is highly prized for its intense flavor, while Ban is a lesser known variety that is prized for its firm flesh and mild flavor. Soil Requirements Thai durian trees require well-draining soil with a pH level between 5.0 and 6.5. The soil should be rich in organic matter, and it should be able to retain moisture without becoming waterlogged. It is recommended to plant durian trees in slightly sloping terrain to avoid waterlogging during heavy rain. Propagation Thai durian trees can be propagated through both seeds and grafting. Seeds are the most common method of propagation, and they should be planted in a mixture of compost and sand. The seeds should be planted at a depth of around 2 cm, and they should be watered regularly until germination occurs. Grafting, on the other hand, involves attaching a cutting from a mature durian tree to a seedling. This method is more reliable but requires more skill and knowledge. Planting and Care Durian trees should be planted in a location that receives plenty of sunlight and has good drainage. The trees should be spaced at least 10 meters apart to allow for proper growth and development. Durian trees require regular watering, especially during the dry season, and should be fertilized with organic matter to promote healthy growth. Pruning and Maintenance Durian trees require regular pruning to promote healthy growth and fruit production. Pruning should be done during the dry season, and it should be done carefully to avoid damaging the tree. Durian trees should also be protected from pests and diseases, which can cause serious damage to the tree and reduce fruit production. Harvesting Thai durian trees typically produce fruit after 4 to 5 years, and the fruit is harvested when it is ripe. The fruit should be harvested carefully to avoid damaging the tree or the fruit. The fruit should be stored at room temperature for a few days to allow it to ripen fully before eating. Soil Preparation Before planting durian trees, it's important to prepare the soil properly. The soil should be tilled to a depth of at least 60 cm to break up any hardpan layers and improve drainage. If the soil is compacted or heavy, adding organic matter like compost or well-rotted manure can help improve soil structure and fertility. It's also a good idea to have the soil tested to determine its nutrient content and pH level. If the pH level is too low or too high, soil amendments may be necessary to adjust it to the ideal range for durian trees. Watering and Irrigation Durian trees require regular watering, especially during dry spells. Newly planted trees should be watered frequently to establish a deep root system. Once the tree is established, it may only need to be watered once or twice a week, depending on the weather and soil conditions. 
It's important not to overwater durian trees, as this can lead to root rot and other fungal diseases. A well-designed irrigation system can help ensure that durian trees receive the right amount of water at the right time. Fertilization Durian trees are heavy feeders and require regular fertilization to thrive. Organic fertilizers like compost, chicken manure, and fish emulsion are good choices for durian trees, as they provide a slow release of nutrients over time. Inorganic fertilizers can also be used, but it's important not to overdo it, as excessive fertilizer use can lead to salt buildup in the soil. A balanced fertilizer with equal amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium is recommended for durian trees. Pest and Disease Control Durian trees are susceptible to a range of pests and diseases, including fruit fly, stem borer, and anthracnose. Regular inspection and monitoring of the trees can help detect problems early, before they become serious. Cultural practices like pruning and sanitation can also help reduce the risk of pest and disease problems. Insecticides and fungicides can be used if necessary, but it's important to follow label instructions carefully and use the lowest effective dose. Harvesting and Storage Thai durian trees typically produce fruit from May to August with peak production in June and July. The fruit should be harvested when it is fully ripe, as unripe fruit will not ripen properly and may have an unpleasant flavor. The fruit should be handled carefully to avoid bruising or damaging the flesh. After harvesting, the fruit should be stored at room temperature for a few days to allow it to ripen fully. Once ripe, the fruit can be eaten fresh or used in a variety of recipes, from smoothies to desserts. <music>